visit SailRight.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we'll show you how to make a vent shade for your RV. This vent shade is installed with snads and snaps and has a blackout fabric on the backside to reduce the light coming through. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. In this first chapter, we'll show you how to cut your fabric to size. This is the trim for the uh, roof vent. I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm using Sunbrella Marine Grade fabric, which has a fairly stiff hand, which makes this project pretty easy. But you could use Top Notch 9 or any fabric that really has a, a pretty good stiff hand. And the reason I want a stiff hand is that uh, I want to be able to easily sew on the binding around the perimeter. If the fabric doesn't have a very stiff hand, it's a lot more difficult to sew the binding on. In here I'm using a rotary cutter and a cutting mat, and I'll just go around the perimeter. There's no reason to use a hot knife for this because uh, of the fact that we're gonna put a binding on the edge. This is a Sunbrella marine grade fabric with a light, as you can see that it does shine through. This is a blackout fabric and notice the light is completely blocked by the blackout fabric. So we're gonna use this for the underside. This area has several blackout fabrics that you can select from. Uh, this one is a white on white. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, a rotary cutter and the cutting mat. So now I have two layers. I have a Sunbrella marine grade uh, canvas on the bottom and I have the blackout fabric on top. I'm going to line it up so that edges are pretty much matched up. In this chapter we'll be sewing binding around the perimeter. I'm going to use a quarter inch basting tape uh, for canvas and upholstery and I'm going to go around the perimeter. When I get to the corners I'll just create a wrinkle in it because it obviously has to shrink up a little bit and that won't cause any problems whatsoever. I'm going to try to stay a little bit close to the edge. Um, doesn't have to be uh, right on the edge, but as close as possible to that edge. And uh, what I like to do is I like to baste these two panels together so they don't move when you're sewing around the perimeter. Um, that way I don't have to sew them together first before I put the binding on because uh, hopefully they'll stay in the right spot. If you don't use basting tape, you can either use pins, but pins, since we're using a blackout fabric, may actually show up. Uh, you may actually see pinholes wherever you put a, a, a multi-use pin. That's why I like to use the basting tape. We'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. The blackout fabric has a kind of felty side and a smooth side, and you can put either side up or down, doesn't really matter. I'm going to put the felty side down towards this umbrella. If your edges are off a little bit, don't worry, the binding is going to cover that all up, but you definitely want it nice and flat. So this is a three-quarter inch uh, Sunbrella binding, which looks good, and I'm going to put it through a three-quarter inch binder. And I'm going to just feed it through so that the binding is basically right where the needle is going to enter. Now you can start this anywhere you'd like. I'm going to start it uh, right here in the middle position of one side. And you need to make sure that your fabric is fed in to the fold of the binding at the exiting point of the binder. So here, I'm not going to do any reversing. I'm going to bury my needle so I don't lose my thread, trailer threads. There we go. And I've already set it up to make sure that the stitch is in the right spot. And I will carefully sew around the perimeter. Because our edges are curved like this, it's pretty easy to go around them. Even if you create a bubble like this, that's okay and I'm sewing about a five millimeter straight stitch. Notice how I'm feeding the uh, edge into the fold. So you wanna slow, or sew slowly 
at the corners. If you notice here, I'm kind of keeping the fabric into this little middle section here, but I'm paying attention to where it exits. This is actually the best way to do it, so try to keep your fabric in here, but watch the exiting point. You want to have that fabric pushed into that uh, fold, but this, this is kind of like the appropriate way to feed it to make sure that you're always going to be close to that uh, fold. Okay, you can stop. So now we're coming to the point where we first started sewing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna use a hot knife because I'm gonna overlap this uh, beginning point and I'm gonna cut the binding just about an inch or so past that and I'm gonna cut it so that it's uh, perpendicular to the edge with a hot knife. That way it doesn't unravel. And there are a couple ways you can do this. You can either do this by using the binder or you can pull the binder away and do it by hand but I actually like to use the binder. So this is rather thick when I get to this point, so I'm gonna make sure that it's pushed well into the binder so that hopefully it sews almost evenly. It'll never be perfect, but it'll be close. So I'm gonna make sure this is shoved in there nicely. I'm gonna hold the binder in place. Then once I sew past that a little bit, then I'm gonna do some reversing, move this out of the way. And there we go, there's the junction, which doesn't look too bad, actually. Coming up in this chapter, installing the snads and snaps. Now there are two ways that we can do this. We can do this with a YKK snad, which uh, has a 3M VHB glue on the backside, and we can glue it onto the corners for our, um, our blackout screen or we can use the screw-in studs. These are obviously a lot cheaper, but I do have to drill through this and install a stud. Um, it's, it's your choice. We're gonna use uh, the, the snads here because they could be removed if you don't uh, like this application. I'm gonna use an alcohol prep pad and just go over each one of the corners because I'm only gonna put a snap in each of the corners and that kind of cleans the surface. And then once that's done, then I'm going to use a Primer 94, a 3M Primer 94 that's available from Sayerite. This is an ampule. Um, I highly recommend using it anytime you install a snad like this. Um, it just gets a better bond. So once the, um, the alcohol is evaporated, I'm going to break the ampule. And that allows the uh, liquid to move to the uh, applicator. And we're just going to put this on at each one of the corners. And you don't even really have to let that dry for, for very long. Then we're going to peel off the transfer paper on the bottom of the 3M VHB of the SNAD. And we're going to secure it to the corner and press for about a minute or so. We want this to be a very tight fit. So onto each of the SNADs, I'm going to snap an easy fit. And these will allow us to position our uh, cover and make sure that it's very taut. Now you can use this tool to snap it down as I did or sometimes you can just press with your fingers and do the same. Um, if it doesn't seem to snap you can use the tool. Okay we can put this umbrella out so you see this umbrella or the blackout fabric it doesn't matter this is this umbrella side we're going to put it out and we're basically going to make sure that it's covering the uh, flange well we're going to make sure that it's lined up and then we're going to push the easy fit through. Now usually I don't put a snap in less than um, three layers of fabric, but this is a pretty small piece of canvas and two layers should reinforce the snap position fairly, fairly well. Okay, that looks about right. So I'm just going to push on the fabric. And there's the position of that one. Now if we want to make sure that it stays, we just put one of these black caps on top. Okay, and then we're going to come over and probably do the opposite corner over here, going across diagonally, and make sure that it's pulled 
taut. And the neat thing about this is that you can always reposition. If you don't like it, you can always just lift it up and put the, uh, the pin through a different location. And then we're going to pull both directions like this and push it through. There are several ways to install a snap. This is the press and snap tool, so the button goes in this side, and then the socket snaps onto this die. Now we're ready for installation. Okay, the cap's removed, so now all we have to do is just take this off, and we have a location exactly where the snap goes. Now make sure the button's on the top, and so all we have to do is just secure this down over top of that hole, right there and press the lever and you can set your your tension this is obviously way too tight um, until you get a kind of like a vice grip relief like right there that's perfect and our snap is installed right where we want it to be we're going to do that to all four corners Another way to do this is to use the Sariat drill hole cutters. The eighth inch drill bit puts a hole in the fabric and then we can use a tool uh, that uses a mallet to put the snap in. So this is the hole cutter. First you have to drill a hole. I'm going to put a cutting pad on the bottom side. Well we know exactly where that hole goes because of that uh, pin that went through. So right there. And then we take the uh, button and we put it on the anvil and push the, oops, we don't want to do it that way, do we? We want to turn this over. And we put the button on the anvil and push it through. This is the underside of the fabric. We put the socket, <coughs> we put the socket on top and then this tool over the top of it. Give it a few blows until the uh, barrel is rolled over nicely and your snap is installed. Usually you use this tool to get it off a regular snap stud but on a snab that's almost impossible because of the ridge so I just use a small screwdriver and pry them up like that. In this chapter we're going to install the vent chain. Okay this is the flange for our vent opening and we're going to position it in place and then we're going to uh, screw in the screws that were originally in it to hold it to the ceiling. Okay, so it's installed. So it'll fit better one way than the other, and we have this binding where it joins, and I know that that binding basically uh, fits better if it, it's along that edge. So now, if we want to kind of block the sun, we just snap it up. Now you'll notice the edges hang down a little bit. You're not going to get a total block out because of that, um, but it's going to block out a majority of the light. And we'll show you what that looks like uh, when we have a bright day. Right now it's a very cloudy day. Here's a look at the shade when the sun is out and shining bright. Next up, a list of the materials and tools we use to accomplish this project. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series.